Greetings friends, welcome to another lecture on Hell, Views of the Underworld in Literature. This will be lecture 1.8 in the Mesopotamian section. We're, as I said in the last lecture, we're going to look at two pieces of literature. Uh, and we're going to talk about some Assyriologists uh, from the 18, late 1800s and why they're important and also their contributions. We're, we're also going to look at a text where uh, Enkidu uh, from Gilgamesh is another story that can be included with the Epic of Gilgamesh. Enkidu travels to the underworld and he gets stuck there. So we'll look at that. First we'll, we'll discuss the um, beautiful text of Ishtar and Isdubar, a translation from Leonidas uh, Hamilton. And um, I really enjoy the poetry from this, but the problem is a lot of the languages, uh, when translated uh, at this time period in the late 1800s, um, a lot of imagery that's put in here to make this rhyme or to turn it into poetry, may not be in line with the uh, Babylonian views or the Sumerian views of the, uh, of the way things were. So, um, I don't, even though the translation is very beautiful, I read it for entertainment purposes only, um, because there are newer translations that do this much better. They're not so concerned with making it rhyme, but this is an epic in, it, in itself that Hamilton pulled off in, in um, the late 1800s. Another Assyrian, um, I mean, an Assyrian archaeologist uh, uh, was uh, George Smith uh, from 1840 to 1876. He wrote, he wrote a text, uh, the Chaldean account of Genesis, which is brilliant. At this point, uh, a lot of scholars were trying to pair up the biblical text with ancient Near Eastern texts, and a lot of times they were over-exuberant in my opinion, of doing that. And this is one of those early texts where that happens. I'll be posting the uh, PDF to this book in the details section. So if you're wondering how people viewed uh, uh, the ideas of uh, Isdubar and ancient Near Eastern literature, 1876, go look at that. Now, I want to stress that Isdubar is later associated with Gilgamesh. Isdubar's barber seer is later associated, his name's Havani, uh, is later associated with Enkidu. So we're going to look at uh, the tablet 12 of Gilgamesh, where Enkidu uh, travels to the underworld, he gets stuck there, Gilgamesh meets him halfway and asks him some questions, and we're going to talk about, we're going to read a text of uh, the, the epic of Ishtar. In Isdubar by Hamilton. So in this section, um, uh, Habani and Isdubar are traveling on a journey. They get in a fight with two dragons. Habani is uh, very uh, is is wounded, and he's he's in the dying and then king's arm. He has two visions: one of the underworld, and one of a one of a garden-like state, uh, and um, he ends up dying in the king's arm, and he's placed in the cave um, as a burial by Isdubar. And then Isdubar travels to the underworld. And what's interesting here, they go through the underworld, and they pass into a garden like Eden state. So it's not that they are ascending into the heavens, they are descending, traveling through the underworld to the other side, and we'll see this also, I mean, you see this also happening in the Epic of Gilgamesh. So here is Dubar is in the middle uh, of the underworld, and he drops his light. And th the poetry, as I said before, is very beautiful. However, it may not be accurate, but you can read this. It's, 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 it's gorgeous. He slips and drops his torch. It far doth glow. Beneath him on the rocks, alas, in vain, 
he seeks a path to bring it back again. It moves, snatched by Delku's hand it flies, away within the gloom, then falling dies. Within those waters black, with a loud hiss that breaks the silence of that dead abyss, he turns again amid the darkness gropes, and careful climbs the craggy, slimy slopes. And now he sees, O oh joy, the light beyond. He springs, he flies along the glowing ground. A joyous dashes through the weaving green that lustrous meets his sight with rays serene. Where trees pure amber from their trunks distill, where sweet perfumes the groves of arbors fill. So, here, this kind of reminds us a little bit of Dante. And if you get a chance, take a look at this and, and make those comparisons. Now what Hamilton did, and what I don't really like, even though he documented it really well in this uh, epic, was he, he took a lot of pieces where the cuneiform might have been broken up, and inserted uh, other hymns and stuff that were found in with this, and, and composed the epic. So even, even though it may still follow in some kind of uh, flow, um, it may not be all that accurate. There are many better ac accurate uh, translations uh, today of this, and Epic of Gilgamesh uh, is, is one of those. So looking at um, Gilgamesh Tablet 12 now, they drop Gilgamesh and Enkidu. Somehow they drop a magic drum into the underworld. There's big debate. Uh, we need to go get it. Enkidu decides to go down and retrieve it. And so Gilgamesh, like we see in the other literature, uh, where they're given specific um, instructions what not to do. Enkidu uh, ignores everything Gilgamesh says. You can read it for yourself. He gets all the way down there and uh, gets stuck down there. Gilgamesh is very upset about his friend getting stuck in the underworld. Goes to the gods. They allow him to go halfway to the underworld. Gilgamesh to come halfway to the middle and they meet. And Gilgamesh is allowed to ask him questions. It's very beautiful, and once you get to the bottom of the the translation, here he's asking him questions. What's really interesting here is people who have more sons uh, are happier. People who had a son that has died or uh, is 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 grieving. So here is a part of that underworld where uh, your your children or your um, offspring can uh, create how your outcome would be in the underworld, which having many sons is looked upon as a, as, a, as a positive thing. Having no sons or a dead son is a negative scene. So here, here further down, almost at the end of the translation, Gilgamesh asks him, Did you see there a man whose one son died? I saw him sobbing, all alone in the open fields. Did you see there a man with two grown sons? I did indeed, and he smiles all day long. Did you see there a man with three of his own boys? I did, I did, and his heart was full of joys. Did you see there a king with four full kids? I did see one whose pleasure is supreme. So, you can read on and um, take a look at that. So. Thanks for listening. In, in the next lecture, we'll, we'll do a summary of all this great literature out of the uh, Mesopotamian era, and then we'll do an introduction uh, coming into the Egyptian material. And we'll look at the Egyptian mythology and, and theology and see how exactly their underworld was. We'll see a lot of the same uh, themes happening. Uh, we'll see um, <coughs> visors to the underworld, gatekeepers. And uh, we'll see different stages of traveling through. So um, take care, friends. And remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.